Now, Saturday Night Theatre. James? Yes, Mr. Botley? Come here, James. Come on, boy! Are you responsible for this stamp book? Yes, Mr. Bottomley. Well, it's not right, is it? Uh, Why, well, I... I uh, Don't start <laughs> your snivelling. You've been caught out and you'll have to take your punishment like a man. Entries in book and cash left in box are at odds. Aren't they? Aren't they? <laughs> yes, Mr. Bottomley. You've been fiddling the books, but now you've been caught. Petty thieving. If you can't organise a simple swindle like this, you'll never amount to anything. Don't you know you can't do this sort of thing without covering your tracks? Pardon, Mr. Bottomley? Put in some extra entries, boy. Don't make it so obvious. You mean you're not going to give me the sack? For God's sake, you miserable oh. little worm. Oh, everyone has to start somewhere here. Look. Like... This. Man of the People, a dramatic impression of the life and several careers of Horatio Bottomley by Alan Sadler, with Patrick Moore as Bottomley. Man of the People. In the days when I was hard up, not many years ago, I suffered that which only can the sons of misery know. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, I came from uh, humble beginnings. My mother, I do wit's end. Well, it was the orphanage for me, but I never let that blight my outlook. Oh, drink up. Mm. There's plenty more where that came from. Relations, friends, companions, they all turned up their nose and rated me a vagabond for want of better clothes. Champagne. Mm. <laughs> Good for the liver. <laughs> and twinkles up the kidneys, I shouldn't wonder. My wine merchant swears by it. Mm. No better start to the day. And, uh, <clears throat> kippers. <laughs> oh, these are brought over specially from the Isle of Man. Mm. What a life, eh? Mr. Bottomley, these shares, they're no good, are they? Hmm? Worse than that, they're worthless. No, nah, you don't want to worry about that. All the losses sustained in that other fiasco will be carried forward into this guilt edge. I'm the, not... The, the price of one share, you will get two. Well, I have my good name to protect. But are you sure? Sure? Huh? I'll stake my life on it. Hey. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Uh, Lottie. <laughs> oh, isn't she just wonderful? <laughs> yeah, mind you, mind you, she is expensive to run. <laughs> oh, but worth every penny. Is she a... A, a singer. Uh, Lovely little thing. Such a sweet nature, you've no idea. Can't do enough for you. For me? Huh? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I'll introduce you and you can take it from there. <laughs> uh, after we've done our little bit of business. I mean, <laughs> business before pleasure, eh? <laughs> but uh, how much would I... <laughs> so oh, there he was, one leg in, yeah, one leg out, <laughs> and 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 the horse had bolted. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, I say this for you, Bottomley. You can tell a good yeah, yarn. Well, it's true. Uh, I swear it. <laughs> well, well, oh, well, well. Well. look, look. Why don't you? Uh, Nip round to your club and I'll pick you up in ten minutes. Uh, yeah, well, I've got a few matters to put in hand and then we'll go out and dig out Rosie. I thought you said Lottie. Oh, well, please yourself. Lottie, it shall be. Uh, right, yeah, yeah well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Bye for now. Uh, bye. Hmm. James? Uh, yes, Mr. Bottomley? Here. Yeah. Yeah, round the bank, as sharp as you like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pay this in. Oh, one on your way, into Ruddles, 500 each way. Uh, no. A thousand on the nose. The bookies? Turf accountant! Oh. Have a bit of respect! That's what they said, they wouldn't take it without the money. Go there first. Show them the check you're paying in. Oh. Oh, good God! Oh, I've had an account in Ruddles for years. They've had more of my money than I've had of theirs. Now, where's those share certificates? Lot. Lottie! 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 Oh, oh, 
William. May I present? <laughs> He's rolling in it. Oh, my God. Oh, what's the matter? I've just remembered an urgent appointment. Friend of mine in hospital just oh, had a serious yeah. operation. I must go. Yes. Look after Lottie for me, will you? Uh, she's got some bubbly ears somewhere. Lottie? You can't come to any harm with a peer of the realm. No, 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 <laughs> I wonder if I can get a cab. <laughs> Nelly! <laughs> Flower of British woman. Oh, get off! Nelly. Oh, give yourself a chance! Oh, it's all fixed. Mm. You make your debut tonight. Mm. It's only a small role, but. Well, it's a start. Well, I haven't got anything to wear! <laughs> all the better. <laughs> Could I ask you something, Mr. Bottom? Could you what? You got a cheek, young James. You ought to be at Bow Street, not asking questions of your hard-pressed employer. Well, I heard you talking about being in an orphanage. Yeah, true. Incredible, but true. What? Well, well, I was wondering, well, how you got to get a big business like this? You know, in the city. James, you'll go a long way. I'm not sure in which direction. All that uh, rags to riches fascinates you, doesn't it? Let me tell you, James, there's no disgrace being born in the working class. Just means your parents were a pair of mugs. But even that needn't be fatal. Ah, I was uh, 23 when I had my first business. I took down shorthand in the courts, you know. <laughs> yeah, at the time, I was... I was living in two back rooms in Battersea. The outlook and my future looked grim but in the days when i was hard up i found a blissful hope it's all a poor man's heritage to keep him from the rope but i found a good old maxim and this shall be my plan although i wear a ragged coat i wear it like a man Look at this. <laughs> it lies up bottomly. I'm trying to bring a note of hope and excitement into our drab lives, and all you can do is fiddle with that plastic piano. Well, what? Look, look at this. Sovereigns? <laughs> Gold sovereigns? Yeah. Oh, horrid look. <laughs> Where did you get them? Brandy balls. That's the password. That's all you need to know. Eight to one. Horses. Oh, yeah, magnificent animal. A noble beast. Now then, uh, that's the rent. Uh, how many weeks is it? Six. Seven yeah, tomorrow. Where's those bills? Hey, never mind. Add it up. There. Now I am the accountant. Yeah, me other accountant. Accountant? Yeah, bookie, Lizzie. Never Welsh on a bookie. Debt of honour, you see. <laughs> yeah, well, that's made things better, isn't it? But there's none left. Ah, yeah. Still short of equity. Will we have to send the piano back? You and your old piano. No, mm, of course <laughs> not. No, we're on our way, Lizzie. We're on our way. Things are looking up. I've just been with the printers. And our first newspaper comes out next week. <laughs> yeah, when that happens, we'll have something to play with. As long as you don't get into debt. Now, in for a penny, in for a pound. Lay hold on life and it shall be yours for... For, um... Yeah, well, something. <laughs> yeah, well, eternity, yeah. Uh, you don't want to live in two rooms all your life, do you? Mm. Now, this rent money. Now, I could find a good use for that. As I walk along the boy belong with an independent air You can hear the girls declare He must be a millionaire I come to you, Mr. Hagen Knowing you to be a man of honesty and integrity Who also knows a good proposition when it's put to him fair and square You can hear them sigh and wish to die You can see them wink the other eye At the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo we are here, Mr. Bottomley, but to invest in sound business ventures that will yield us a reasonable return. Yeah, I know that. But most of the city financial institutions only put up money at odds on. Your company has shown imagination and flair at picking winners. You don't think this is rather a big jump for you? <laughs> there comes a time, Mr. O'Hagan, when everybody has to make a big jump. It's no good funking it. It's sink or swim. 
Look, Mr. O'Hagan, I am the living proof of the existence of the self-made man. I started the Acne Gazette on a shoestring. The advertisers received special considerations in the editorial columns for... for which they were, uh, duly grateful. Oh, they backed me to the point where I could branch out into creating the Financial Times and buying the Draper's Record and the Municipal Review. Yes, I, I know you've been very enterprising, Mr. Bottomley. How much do you think you'll need to clinch this deal? Comrade, comrade, ever since we were boys, sharing each other's sorrows, sharing each other's joys. <laughs> it's good to see you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, listen, Charlie, ain't got a lot of time. Uh, it's business, you see, and, uh, well, our flow, you know, well, well, she never did have a good head for figures. Well? Yeah, I happen to know, uh, inside information, like, that a big city trust is going to make a bid for a certain group of run-down printing works and a derelict paper mill in Devon. Well, what of it? Well, simple, really. If somebody was able to buy up these, uh, these businesses before the bid was made, they'd be able to pocket the difference. Well, why don't you get on with it? I can't, you see, because I'm involved with the bid. Now, what I'm suggesting is that your name being Dolman, and it not being common knowledge that you're married to my sister... Ah, oh, I knew there'd be something. Yeah, but don't you see? The people who own the printing and the paper mill will be amazed to get an offer. Buy it up as cheap as you can, and then sell it to my new company. Your company? How's that? Because I'm raising the money to start it. Is it legal? Perfectly. <laughs> you don't think I'd involve you and Flo in something underhand, do you? Horace, you'd slice up your grandmother for sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the money coming from? Oh, I'll give you a check. I'm issuing shares in my new company. Anyway... There'll only be a couple of days before it's off your hands. There'll be you and one of my clerks, Tommy Cox. As I walk along the boy belong with an independent air, you can hear the girls declare he must be a millionaire. And, um, what's it to be called, this company? The Hansard Union. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Now, it's agreed that the Hansard Union starts with a share capital of £500,000. Mm -hmm. The company shall consist of a merger of five newspaper and printing companies listed in the uh, prospectus. Uh, Mr Bottomley will be going to Vienna as a representative of the newly formed Anglo-Austrian Printing and Publishing Union to set up contracts with printers on the continent. Now, we have this letter from a Mr. Charles Dolman offering a package of small concerns. Uh, at the express wish of the board, I visited the printing works at Redhill and the paper mills at Columpton, Devon. I can yeah. report that both concerns are in tip-top condition. Uh, yeah. Mr. Dolman, who is not in the best of health, wishes to dispose. Yes, it's, it, I feel I ought to point out that from the initial capital of 500,000, we have already paid out 325,000 for the five companies. And now it is proposed that we pay 105,000 on the Dolman proposition. It's uh, not going to leave much in the uh, <coughs> kitty. Uh, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I was coming to that. I think we ought to increase our share capital by another 500,000. Oh, well, well Lord, Lord, that's pretty Lord. cool. Well, after all, I mean, we have the investors to think about. They wouldn't thank us for missing back in a favourite. There's 14 printing concerns in Austria, all going for a song. This will be our entry into the continental printing. You mean you're going to buy more firms? Certainly. Good heavens. Well, <laughs> is that agreed? Hey, Eliza, we'll have to start thinking bigger than tea and cakes. Hey? When people come round, business people. Oh, like tea and cakes, huh? Mm, mm, lovely. It's like a big rich tea party. <laughs> business people? 
Like that Tommy Cox? Ah, Tommy Cox is probably the most useful associate I've got. Oh, I can't stand him. The way he looks at me. His breath smells. Oh, I trust Tommy Cox with my most private secrets. So, you've got secrets, have you? Oh, I don't know what's the matter with you nowadays. You're so touchy. Don't you want us to get on? Getting on? Business. That's all you talk about. Bringing these people here, showing off, acting big. Well, there's hardly any point in acting small. Oh, look, this place is getting you down. We'll try and find somewhere else, eh, in the country. You'd like that, wouldn't you? I don't know. You bring some roses to your cheeks. Now, look here, Bottom Bear. I don't like this. I don't care for it at all. As chairman of the Hanson Union... And a very good one, too. There's a demand from these people in Austria for £75,000. As far as I can see, there's nothing in the kitty to meet it. I'm arranging for a loan. My God, Bottomley, the company is running several loans already. It's all very well raising money on debenture stock, but the payments have to be met. And the interest is crippling. I know, I know, sharks, that's what they are. People without any enterprise or initiative of their own just leech and bloodsuck on go-ahead businesses like ours. Well, well, that's hardly the point, and not strictly true. Some of our debtors have been very fair and uh, very patient. Be a pity to let it go. Yeah. The Austrian people will go bankrupt without a sale. That's why it's going at such a knock-down price. Yeah. Well, well, I suppose I'll have to try and raise it. He's very well known, he's bossy to the ladies on the stage. Such a jolly good oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. He's all for rage. Oh, and a jolly oh, yeah. big baby, oh, yeah. he's bossy when the mermaids are in the green. He's very well known, he's bossy as a Piccadilly Johnny with a little glass eye. Oh, strappy woman, eh, Governor? Yeah, just about my size, eh, Tommy? Oh, she's not that big, Gov. Oh, you be careful. <laughs> Do you know her, then? Yeah, well, I got her the job. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm, uh, I'm putting her into a West End musical. I hope she's going to be grateful. <laughs> You'll have your work cut out there, Governor. <laughs> sure you don't want a hand? I don't know what to do. We'll have to make a public statement. Interest is due on a 50,000 loan from the Debenture Corporation and there's no funds to meet it. Yes. It was, uh... It was siphoned off to prop up the Anglo-Austrian. For God's sake, man, face facts! The Anglo-Austrian has issued a statement. The payment of the last quarter's debenture interest almost exhausted the company's funds. The company is in possession of no other assets, the company has acquired no business in Vienna or elsewhere, and its whole capital appears to be lost. Well, what happened to the 75,000? You will have to ask the accountants about that. I don't do the books. Well, seems to me that I've been very badly advised. It seems to me that there'll be an investigation and that someone had better think up some answers. Tommy, there's some people coming in to look at the books. Uh, get a taxi and take that pile for a ride around the park. Of course you, Governor. Hey, hey no need to take them all. <laughs> Must show willing. <laughs> oh, Lord, that might be them early trying to catch us on the off. Quick, out the back. Whoa. Ah. Come in, gentlemen. Mr. Bottomley. Here you'll find all the books on the table. Ah. Over here. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, some of them are still with the auditors. Silence in court! Well, Tommy, what do you think? Well, it's a big house. Yeah. Lots of grounds in it. Yeah, and stables, Tommy, and stables. <laughs> it's a bit run down, I know. Fraud was the motive, first and last. Vast sums were paid in and mysteriously disappeared overnight. Be nice for Lizzie. I'll uh, have to find a place in town for uh, entertaining. <laughs> Pop down here at weekends. <laughs> the members of the board of directors were men who, it could be said, were safely and snugly 
in Mr. Bottomley's pocket. Don't look too good, do it? Nah, one side of the case always looks black. My dear Tommy, it is very easy to say things. It's proving them. It's awkward. Twenty-two days have I sat in this court watching the prosecution sweating and straining to establish one piece of evidence of fraud. Of course, they haven't been able to do it. The Ansard Union shareholders were not bound under any contract to take up the Dolman offer. They were free to buy or not. Why weren't the books of the company produced by the official receiver's department? The Ansard Union did not fail. It was wrecked. I refuse to be a party to the conspiracy and that is why I am in the dock today. Say what you like about him. The blighter is very impressive. It's his air of wounded innocence. It's complicated. This is high finance, not penny numbers. But the real and only question that remains is, was it legal? <laughs> the mere fact that I, as a director of Ansar, made a profit does not make me a criminal. If the money was obtained by false pretenses, well, that would be different. He's whittled it down so much that there's hardly anything left to pin on him. Yes, very impressive. Big trial verdict, racing results, all the latest winners. That's side of Rob's home, eh? Yeah, boy. Give me one of those. Look, Tom, now. Big trial verdict. Last. What's up, Gov? Bloody nag fell down at the third. Another monkey down a drain. <laughs> Sam Ferrian, eh, Gov? Live to fight another day. Did you uh, find anything out about the uh, Basingstoke Canal? Dried up years ago. About 35 miles of mud. Have to look into that, Tommy. It's going dirt cheap. <laughs> Not surprising, is it? Tommy, I'm putting up for Parliament. Yeah, well, I think you should. You've been a great talker in that. Bottomly not guilty. I should bloody well think so. wanted all this. Servants and grounds and gardeners and builders here all the time altering and adding things. I don't know where you get the money from. No, no, don't whine, Lizzie. I, I can't stand it. You don't get any complaints from your fancy friends. Not when you're buying them drinks and giving them presents. A fur coat for that actress. Oh, you can have a fur coat. You can have anything. What do you want, jewellery? I don't want nothing. But I don't want you giving it away to all those women. It's business, Lizzie. Promotion. Gets my name in a paper to be photographed with a well-known actress. People look at it and they say, Hello, well, Bottomley doing all right. I'll take out some shares in one of his companies. I don't know about that. You never understand, do you? You always want to drag me down. You're more at home with the lower orders. Ooh, what the... <laughs> Bottomley, don't you dare move. I've been trying to get to you for months. My dear sir, I, I am not that elusive. Oh, yes, you are. Slippery and underhand. You've ruined me, Bottomley. Uh, I don't think I shall get the gist of this until you put that gun away. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. That will be all. <laughs> Guns. Guns in an office. No way to conduct business, is he? It's the only way to conduct business with you. My dear sir, if you'd only explain your problem without all the, the amateur dramatics, I mean, I, I see what I can do to help. Oh, by God, Bottomy, you've got to know. Oh, my dear chap, you are overwrought. Nothing in life is worth getting that upset about. 
It's all a gamble. I mean, a little flutter here, a little flutter there. <laughs> a little flutter of the sheets and blankets, and I could have been born the Duke of Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, sit down, sit down. Here we go. Look, hey, I'm sure we can sort this out. I, I, I trusted you. Yeah, and a very good judge, too. Your trust is not misplaced, I assure you. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, look, we'll have a glass of pomery. Yeah, things always look better after that. <laughs> you know, I've given up smoking so I can preserve my palate for its delicate, bubbly flavour. Yeah, I drink that. I positively recommend it. Oh. Now, you're in a bit of an hole. <sighs> Don't worry. I've been in holes all my life. Have you, uh... Have you heard of the Basingstoke Canal? Peggy! <coughs> Peggy! Are you decent? Of course. Oh! Oh, Peggy! Oh! Good. You got something to drink? Well, there's those bottles you brought last time. I hear you got off them. Yeah, touch and go, Peg, touch and go. Gee, those stairs. Well, sit down. Look, I've got a change. I've only just come off. Yeah. Good house. Full every night. Oh. Peggy, uh... Ah. Oh. Come on, come on, spit it out. It's not like you to be short of words. Well, I don't know where to start. I mean... Ah, oh, things are in a god-awful mess. Business, you mean? No, oh, no, 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 I can handle that. No, it's Lizzie. Oh. Well, she's been a good pal, I mean, when we were hard up, but... But now she doesn't seem to have any idea how to deal with people. I mean, I had some people were down for the weekend and she stayed in her bedroom all the time. Oh, dear. Not her type, she says. People who are going to back me to put me up as an MP. Peggy. You know, I wish, I wish oh. we could do something. Oh. You'd be, you'd be marvellous entertaining. <laughs> You've got such a way with you. And so have you. No, no, you're different being an actress. Yeah, come on, sit down. I'll rub the back of your neck. Oh, oh, I don't know what I'd do if I hadn't got you. But you haven't got me. Nobody owns Peggy Primrose. Aye. Although I've had plenty of offers. Yeah, I bet you have had some woman <laughs> like you. Hey, what about that girl in my chorus, Gladys? <laughs> She a handsome woman, No, too. not the same attractive, damn attractive, oh, mind you. a bit young for you. No, nothing mm. like that, Peg. I felt sorry for her. She's an orphan. Oh, is that why you moved her into that nice flat in Belgravia? <laughs> it's only a small <laughs> flat. Pokey, I'd call it. And that barmaid, Annie. Is she an orphan, too? Well, she's had an hard life as Annie. Her father used to knock her about. And Reeny in her little flat in Kensington. Oh. Is she another orphan who's had a hard time? No, worse than the others. Talk about hard luck. <laughs> no, but Peg, all of them. Bits of fluff, Peg. <laughs> Not like you. You're... You're different class. You mean I'm old? No, honest. If you'd move in with me, nobody else would get to the start. Oh, post. yes. Actress moves in with prospective MP, who then deserts his wife and small daughter. No thanks. Oh, but Peg, she's hopeless. Lizzie, she's she's tongue-tied, awkward in company. It's bloody agony living with her. Seems to me that Lizzie doesn't know where she is with you. Does she know about all these bits of fluff? Hey, well, what am I supposed to do? Got to have a bit of fun in life. <laughs> What's the point otherwise? <laughs> I can't keep away from it. The sound of the presses, that urgent rattle. The smell of the printer's ink, the paper dust. The old noise and rhythm of the printing process. Oh no, it gets you somehow. You've got surplus capacity here. Have we? Oh yeah, I checked it out. I wouldn't be here otherwise. We'll see about that. Here, this is my office. Oh, Jim. Yes, Mr. Elias. Get down on the floor. Keep an eye on that illustrated job. I don't want them running on till I've seen the proofs. They can make ready and then hold on. Right, sir. Right. Now, uh, Mr. Bottomley, I've looked over your proposal. There's something fresh about it that I like. Not too clear about how we could fit it in, but I like the style, and as you say, we do have a few odd hours to fill in. It's a brand new idea, you see. Yes, yes. John... 
What a marvellous title for a magazine. Plain speaking. Without fear or favour. I said I'd read your proposal, Mr. Brosnan. And you wouldn't have agreed to see me if you hadn't realised that you were onto a winner. The idea has possibilities. Mr. Elias, it's a money spinner. When have we had a paper that is brutally frank about vital issues of the day? Giving a pat on the back when it's deserved. And a boot up the arse when it's needed. A long time ago. Nothing on the market at the moment. Uh... Well, then. Luck, Gov. The bookies give me a special price now. They're so sorry for me. Yeah, you don't seem to be good at picking them out. One day I'm going to gain them, Tommy. I'm going to win the Derby and the Grand National. <laughs> what about that? Well, you need a couple of good horses, then. Yeah, saying good bloodstock is expensive. Yeah, we've been a bit low in the old funds lately. Nobody seems to believe in those Australian gold mines yeah, anymore. So many of the mines have proved unreliable. Yeah, they stink. You can smell them from here. I've been thinking, Tommy, about tidying things up, bringing a lot of my small companies under one roof. A real organisation, like? Yeah, about 20 small companies welded together would make something more, uh, you know, substantial. Yeah, it would, yeah. It certainly would. Yeah, let's call it the... the Joint Stock Trust. Yeah, sounds, uh... sounds respectable. <laughs> A major concern. That could issue some more shares. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, Tommy, I fancy going into racing in a big way. <laughs> well, the bookies will be pleased. You fancy anything in the next race, just so I can lay off it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about a joint stock trust? I fancy that will run on nicely. <laughs> yeah, get that underway and then it's holiday, Tommy. You know, I've got some uh, business to do in Lucerne. Yeah, if you say so. Do you want me to make the arrangements? Yeah, for two. Yeah, be nice for you. Mrs. B, you've been looking a bit off colour lately. Yeah. I'm afraid she won't be well enough to make the trip, though. Hmm. I shall be uh, taking a business companion. What people expect it, you know. Oh, and while I'm there, I want you to send over a certain Mr. Bigland. Sweet States King. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be back before the election. Oh, I, I want you to send some bubbly around to all the old folks' homes in my constituency. Hmm. Courtesy of Horatio Bottomley, the chairman of the Joint Stock Trust. Yeah, good idea, Gov. I'll make a note of that. Put it in the old paper. Whoa! <laughs> you see, I... Uh... Hey. <laughs> I only read about uh, ladies like you in the papers, you know, uh, Lady What's It at the Hunt Ball. <laughs> mm, how boring. Yeah, I never thought I'd get onto uh, uh, intimate terms with somebody, cheers, somebody highly bred. <laughs> <laughs> God, Horace, mm. you're such a snob. Mm. Oh, I am. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> so would you be if you had my start in life. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. When my mother died, I, I was only five. My sister Florence, well, she got taken into a good home, but me, well, it's the orphanage for me. Oh. Uh, terrible place, mm. no? Drab, cold, beating. Never got enough to eat. Well, you've certainly made up for since. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't like it. In a way, I don't regret it. It taught me a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Well, now I know some of those people were so far above me, I... Oh, I realise that they're not so bloody clever after all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, most of them are done right dunces. It's a shame to take their money. <laughs> You're not only a snob. You're a bore as well. <laughs> but I'm not interested in your sordid background. No, I can't be too sure about that. Uh, <laughs> there was a bit of a mystery about my birth. Look, if you don't stop rolling about, which will have you on the floor. Hotel beds weren't made to accommodate great lumps like you. Yeah, I'm trying to get something out of my wallet. Yeah, my father went into the asylum. Ah, here we go. Look at his phone. You see the likeness? Oh, who is it? Bradlaugh. Charles Bradlaugh. The atheist? 
The man who wants votes for women and birth control. Well, I don't know about votes for women, but birth control would make life easier, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> What about this Brad Law? Well, I don't know, really. Yeah, my mother's father, Holyoke, well, he knew Brad Law well. He was always round our house, but, but before I was born. Mm -hmm. have, you, uh, have you heard him speak? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk about a silver tongued orator. Mm -hmm. oh, convince you of anything. Mm, so you think there might have been some uh, hanky panky under the blanket? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but lots mm. of people do think I look at him. Mind you, I don't always agree with what he says. Mm -hmm. Socialism, the British working man is too flight to fall for that. <laughs> no, they all want a chance to make a packet and not have to share it out with anyone else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, he is a striking figure, don't you reckon? <laughs> huh? I think you're as vain as a peacock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a right to be, I? Yes, I had a good talk with Reuben Bigland, a man who has a big opinion of himself. The actual draw has to be made abroad, at sea, probably. Bigland says the ticket should be half a crown. When's it for, then, Gov? The Grand National. I'll announce it in John Bull. Uh, uh, those letters about the Joint Stock Trust, I I'll pass them over to the solicitors. You know, Tommy, I've come to the conclusion that people don't want a flutter. They want everything to be a cast iron certainty. Shares go up and shares come down. When they go up, they're all over you. When they come down, they want to cut your throat. The British working man knows which side his bread is butter. He knows that the rot has set in with this government. This country has led the world in new ideas, new enterprises, but Britain did not become great by being timid. We backed our fancies, followed our sound business instincts. Here, here. Yeah. This country is being badly served by a wishy-washy government. Too scared of its mean little shadow to make the decisions that, that would give British industry the boost it deserves. Oh, good old HB! Yeah. Men should be given their chance to prove their worth. Yeah. Britain should be leading the field, not trailing in last. You can read all about Britain's decline in more detail in an obscure publication I happen to be connected with. The name of which slips my mind for the moment. Uh, John Bull! Yeah, that is it. Thank you, sir. John Bull. Every week, John Bull exposes the people who are bleeding this country white. The smart boys, the share pushers, people who have no loyalty to this country, only to their bank balances. You see that pile of letters? They're all complaints about you and your joint stock trust. The trust is going through a bad time. If people are not prepared to be patient... Well, you know, Joe, you can't get people interested in long-term investment. They all want a quick killing. But isn't that what you promised them? All these letters are saying the same thing. John Bull is always exposing small-time swindles. But what about the editor, eh? And all his enterprises? particularly the Joint Stock Trust. Every letter uses the word hypocrite and a good number mentioned humbug as well. The Joint Stock Trust will be declaring a dividend of 12%. How's that? Simple. The newly formed John Bull Trust has purchased a substantial holding in Joint Stock. This will enable the dividend to be paid and pave the way for a complete reorganisation of Joint Stock. Well, that's been undercapitalised from the start. That's been half the trouble. I don't think I want to know about this. John Bull is a money spinner, isn't it? That's all you want to know about. Look, Bottomley, I know you've been clever in the courts, but you can't go on robbing Peter to pay Paul. And another thing, your private life is no concern of mine, but I wish you could conduct it more discreetly. Uh... I hear Peggy Primrose's husband punched you in the strand. No, it was in the stomach. And there's another libel case Joe, coming. Joe, 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 these cases are meat and drink for John Bull. Months and months of free publicity. In the end, it doesn't really matter if we win or lose. Despite lies and smears, scurrilous, libelous leaflets circulated by my opponents, 
I am proud to have been elected to represent the interests of the good people of South Hackney! Here, uh, uh, take this down, um, uh, ooh, whose hair you got, miss, uh, ooh, <laughs> such a lovely neck, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, uh, now, uh, an open letter to the Prime Minister. Now that your party has an overwhelming majority in the House, uh, the country expects some new and vigorous policies. Uh, big problems need big men to tackle them. Uh, stop waffling and wake up. Here, put the last line in every type and uh, underline it. Uh, you know, a pretty girl like you <laughs> ought to have a pretty dress. <laughs> If the Chancellor is really interested in paying the old age pension, I'll tell him how to raise it. I wish you could just raise the fifty pounds you owe me. I fear that someone is seeking my attention. Get out of my way! Ah, my friend, Mr. Bigland. Friend? You don't know the meaning of that. Don't words. get so excited, Reuben. Don't you patronise me, boy. No offence intended, my dear chap. Look, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you called in. Uh, there's a little matter I would like your opinion about. <laughs> You'll get no free advice from me, not anymore. The Reuben, if you just calm down. I help you, and now I want you to help of me. Of course, old fella, anything. I can do anything. Look, I was just going over to Romano's for a spot of lunch. Can we talk over there? Have you heard of the London and South Western Canal? It starts at Basingstoke. Very good, Lizzie. It's not. You know it's not. Now, don't get all worked up again. Again? You haven't been here for three weeks. I've been busy. Yeah. With Peggy Primrose. It's a platonic friendship, Eliza. She helps me in London. I wouldn't expect you to bring her down here, although you've got cheek enough for anything. Lizzie, you're living off the fat of the land. Better than anything you'd hope for. Everything you need and more. Need? I don't need a tennis court. I don't need racehorses. I don't need a bloody great lake. It's an ornamental pond, Lizzie. Well, it will be. What I need is peace and quiet. I don't want workmen clumping about all the time. You don't have to put up with You it. don't seem to be able to rise above it, do you? And all them people you bring down to wine and dine, they don't think much of you. You're a miserable bitch, Lizzie. Look, I've got enough on my plate at the moment. There's a big court case coming off soon, and if I lose that, we'll both be back in a gutter. I aim to explain in some detail how Mr. Bottomley issued duplicate shares from the Joint Stock Trust, selling them two and three times over, and how he purchased other businesses with the shares that were worthless. He's in it this time. Give him a chance. He hasn't started yet. Unfortunate I may have been, but never dishonest. <laughs> Peggy, I'm worn out. Oh, you don't look too rosy. Mm, how's it going? Oh, they haven't proved anything yet, but they're out to get me, Peggy. Oh, look, lay down. You look all in. Yeah, I'm from the... Oh! I'm oh, from the wrong class, Peggy. You can see it in their eyes. Who is this upstart? Who does he think it? The criminals' business, shares, finance, it's all a swindle when they know it. They don't want me to spill the beans. They, they don't want the working man to, to get on to their game. Will you have to resign as MP? Well, there's a fuel seat to that. 
Ramsay MacDonald, for one. Well, I thought he was a working man. He was. Well, it goes to their heads when they get on him. No, he fancies himself, he does. But they get sucked into it, Peggy. They forget where they come from. Oh, come on. You're not done yet. No, no, I'm bloody not. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> Man's like an eel. You can't pin him down. Masterly performance. And the way he gets everybody on his side, it's like he's tipping them the wink. <laughs> You'd think it was the prosecution in the dock, not him. <laughs> I reckon he's off the hook on the fraud charge. But he'll still be bankrupt, to the tune of around 230,000 by the look of it. <laughs> Let's see if he can get out of that. of a man of dreadful parentage who has lived all his life on the threshold of jail. I say that's a bit strong. Yeah, no doubt lost there. Out of the same stable. But Peggy, he called me a bastard. Didn't you say that Bradlock... Oh, I don't know about that. Though. I mean, that's all speculation. But my mother and father were married. My, my legal father, at least. I must have a birth certificate. I'll sue him if he says it outside the house. I thought you were great. Well, I wasn't convicted. Well, it means starting from scratch again. Well, there's one thing we've still got, Tommy. Right? John Bull, Tommy. John bloody Bull. I stand before you bankrupt, but not penitent. Down, you might say, but not out. To the white screen! It seems as though any stick will do to beat old Bottomley. If Britain is to be run on a sound business principles, it needs businessmen to run it. The John Bull League stands for a business government. Parliament is a sham. Peggy. Peggy, are you asleep? No. Oh, wake up then. I've got something for you. Oh, put the light on. Oh. Ah. My God, Horace, yeah. have you robbed a bank? No, just a little token. Ah, is it real? Yeah. Diamonds and a gold mm, chain. Yeah, you didn't turn away from me when <laughs> I was down. But how? I mean, you're still bankrupt, aren't you? Yeah, I've never had a better time in my life. I need to eat and drink. I've had to give up the London flat for a bit, but the uh, hotel isn't bad. Well, where's it all coming from? Sweepstakes, Peggy. Oh. <sighs> the British working man still loves a flutter. All set? Right, ice giver. Passed off, then. What? The anchor, Tommy. Oh. Three miles out and we're in neutral waters. Then we can make the draw. All this bother. I stay outside the law, Tommy. I've had enough of the law for the time being. I had all the runners. Six horses, all mine. I thought I'd beat the damn bookies just once. It was Ostend. It was pretty murky when they set off, but halfway round they were completely enveloped in fog. The race was declared void. <laughs> oh, you two think that's some schemes, Horace. <laughs> now, that's what I like about you. You're always so... Optimistic. Yeah, well, that's what his country needs. Yeah, who had the winning ticket in the derby? If we, it was a godsend, Peggy. I mean, you couldn't have worked out better. A French lady in Toulouse, and guess what? <laughs> She's blind. Is that good? Well, it's such a heartwarming story. A, a little old lady, blind, you know, from birth, being chased by adventurers for £25,000. Is she? So it says in John Ball. Oh. Look... <laughs> I'll have to love you and leave you. Oh, will you? Yeah. Mm, it's Lizzie's birthday. Oh, there's something else about you that I find attractive. Mm. You're so sentimental. Is that all? Oh, I mean, you and Lizzie. <laughs> it hasn't been anything for years, but you're still loyal to the idea. What are you giving her? The summer house. Lord, get her out a bit. Yeah, she watches a bird, you see. I mean, she's depressed, low-spirited. Mm. It's as though she's half dead already. Tommy, I think we'll 
Go to 50,000 on the National, double up on the Derby. Well, just as you say, Gov. Oh, by the way, that, uh, Madam Glue, uh, can... The blind woman? Oh, yeah, she said thanks. Not often she gets a chance of getting her hands on 250 pounds. Yeah, you got a receipt for the full amount. Oh, yes, Gov. All safely gathered in. <laughs> Oh, war. Who would have thought it? Yes, it was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> the old West End is looking up again. Hey? Soldiers and their wives. Last night out before they go. Yeah. You know, Peggy, this is a great country. All these lads, all willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. It's, it's like a sign, a call, something in the sky. Yeah. Peggy... <laughs> By the time this war is over, this country will remember Bottomley. <laughs> Mr. Bottomley? Wow, he's like that. A fool to himself. Look, look. I don't know how he keeps it up. I mean, you know, he's no spring chicken, is he? Travelling the length of the breadth of the country. That's why some of his business interests get in a mess. I mean, and John Bull, well, Christ. I mean, running a newspaper like that would be enough for some men. Unstinting, that's what he is. Unstinting. Nothing's too good for our boys. Mr Bottomley? Wow. He's a real patriot. Britain's first and last. Well, I don't know about that. No, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Look, I'll tell you something. I'm proud and privileged to be working for him. If I don't do anything else in this life, when my time comes, I'll know I've done a bit of good by helping good old HB. He does seem very popular. Popular? Come on, Ross. The people trust him, you see. They know he's one of them. I never had no rich silver spoon when he was born. No rich relatives to give him a leg up. He's got where he is by sheer hard graft. He's not one of your aristocracy, not HB. He's just an ordinary bloke that's made his way. Ordinary bloke? Ordinary, I told you. Look, people don't resent HB having a nice house and a big car. Not a bit. They'd have him themselves if they could. I mean, well, look, he never gets above himself. He speaks the kind of language a working man understands. Like, straight from the shoulder. Yeah. They know they don't get no humbug from HB. Tommy in the trenches wants more than an ad. Times are too serious for clapping and cheering. We, this nation, are up against a ruthless enemy. We are fighting for our lives against a rabble of subhuman beasts and bullies who do not know the difference between right and wrong. I know how you feel. I have seen our boys slogging it out in the mud and blood. Yes, blood! This war is no picnic. It is not a cricket match. There is no gentleman, no players, these foreign swine don't play by any rules. There's no umpire, no referee, no clerk of the course to appeal to. But our boys go forward with determination, whatever the cost. Is it possible that people living comfortably at home could let them down? If we are going to win this war, we must get on with it! We want no more excuses, no more shilly-shallying.
General Haig told me personally that with a little more extra effort from the powers that be, the big push could be on and the war could be over by Christmas. Which Christmas? No, no, no. no, leave him alone, leave him alone. He is entitled to his opinion, however infantile it may be. <laughs> and don't worry, we have got a secret weapon. And it is this, we are in the right. And God is on our side. Peace will guide and protect our troops. He will chart our ships and steer them on a safe course. He will cast his protective cloak over our gallant sailors and soldiers. Victory will be Mighty, look at you, you're ringing wet. I'm still when I get this shirt off. Oh, certainly gave it to him tonight. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't bad, was it? Prince of Peace always works wonders. What was the take? Well, not all in yet. Looks like about 600. Now, where's that town? Christ almighty, Governor. Sorry. Rubbing down an elephant. Sorry. Yeah, 22 stone of solid champagne. Yeah, 57 pounds and, uh, seven and six months. I think it's about right. For the services fund? Yeah, I should think so. Uh, yeah, I should think that would be very pleased with that, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll count that out then. Uh, where are we off to tomorrow? Leeds and then Bradford. Yeah, give us a clean shirt, Tommy, will oh, you? I've got to go over to the hotel. I'm expecting a visitor. A business acquaintance. Patty. Patty, are you there? Don't put the lights on. <laughs> Uh, why not? <laughs> I want you to find me in the dark. Oh, what a lovely idea. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I know where you Look, Horry, before we start, do I get the part? Hey, oh, <laughs> oh anything your heart desires. <laughs> Come here, I'm, where are you? Yeah, I've got you. Uh, you. Such a oh, lovely sleep. Oh, I must have needed it, Tommy. Of course you do, Governor. Uh, somebody here to see you. Been waiting about an hour. Oh, I feel like a stranded whale. Oh, who is it? <laughs> Male or female? Name of Bigland. Ah, the bold Reuben. Well, I'll show him up, Tommy. Yeah, get me a, a bottle sent up, will you? I can't deal with Reuben without some fortification. Uh, by the way, uh, where are we? Uh, Birmingham, Gov. <laughs> Good morning, Prince of Peace. I thought I'd find you in the best room of the best hotel in town. Uh, you know me, Reuben. Nothing but the best. You think I used to look up to you? I thought you were smart. <laughs> but you can't see any further than your fat belly. Reuben, we're old friends, but don't presume that gives you the right to insult me. And it doesn't mean that I can suspend all judgment on your crazy schemes, turning water into petrol. It's a fraud, Reuben. Oh, you're a fine one to talk about frauds. Uh, Hey, every my dear. You join me, Reuben? Never start the day without it. Puts things in the right perspective. Yeah, right, yeah. All those lies you printed about me. I know you were well paid for your treachery, but it wasn't very nice. Say, all right, my dear, I'll call that. Right, thank you, go on. Could have cost me the election. Not that it matters now. All right, my dear. Pretty little thing, was she? I don't owe you anything. You picked my brains about the sweepstakes, but did you cut me in? Who told you to make the draw in Switzerland, eh? 
Who told you how to place the winning ticket? Now, come on, Reuben. I paid you handsomely for that. Yes, in that shares. Yeah, you could have sold them quickly. Hey, I have that. But what about the printing contract I fixed you up for in Lucerne? You got a nerve. That was part of the deal. Reuben. With the best will in the world, what same man would put money into turning water into petrol? It works. You saw the trial? I saw you drive off in a car at a race course. Well, that was a bad move, that was. By the time you got back, all the mugs were back in the enclosure. You saw the tank being filled. Are you claiming a miracle? Like water into wine? You saw him light it. What about the flames? Nearly six feet high. The flames were impressive, I'll grant you that. But I've seen many clever illusionists, Reuben. I've employed some of them in my theatrical ventures. But this is genuine. As God is my witness. Oh, maybe. But who's going to believe it? People would believe it if you put some money in. People trust you. God knows why. You must hypnotize them. How much do you want? Mm. I've got a good plant, premises, a flashy office. In the city, I reckon you could help me. How there. much? 60,000. Ruben, you've surpassed yourself. But there's no risk. I wouldn't ask if there were. I ask you, Bottomley, is this French? I can hardly believe you're serious. Yeah, I can't seriously believe that you would try to take me in with such a ridiculous idea. But you saw him. He was practically stripped naked. You could see that he hadn't got anything up his sleeve. Now come off it, Ruben. If I can do you with such an error... You're airbrance... a crook, Bottomley. You got away with murder for years. From now on, I shall make it my business to see that the whole world knows about you. You've swindled thousands of people with your rotten companies. Some of them have never you even know, existed. You know, Reuben, this is beginning to sound like blackmail. I only need a witness. I'm sure Tommy would oblige. I know about your clever stuff in the courts. Skating to the edge, bottomly, one day you'll fall in. If I'm anywhere around, you'll get a push. You know your trouble, Reuben. You're jealous. It's the old green eye gone very mouldy. You were a small-time printer until you met me. I broadened your horizons. I shouldn't have bothered. You're small, Reuben. You haven't got the nerve or the imagination. You sod. Ah, Tommy. Glad you were, Andy. Mr. Bigland is just leaving. I'll see you in hell, Bottomley. Come on, sir, no need to get excited. Take your oh. hands off me! Yes! No. Well, yes, Mr. Bottomley. I can't deny that you are a popular figure. These recruiting rallies have been wildly successful. But I still can't see how I can incorporate you into a Seymour Hicks review. I came to you, Mr. Hicks, because I know of your theatrical flair. <laughs> Let me set the scene a bit. Uh, a good rousing song, mm -hmm. then a line of wounded soldiers and sailors troop across the stage. Oh. It's a ragged march, some hobbling on crutches, some blind, some legless in wheelchairs, some Red Cross nurses, a parade of heroes, Mr. X. They string right across the back cloth, then the curtains open on a huge Union Jack, and I'll be standing right in front of it. A drum roll, and I step forward to deliver my Prince of Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. What sort of fee would you expect for this uh, performance? Hundred pounds. Oh, per week, Mr. Bottomley? Per performance, sir, Mr. Riggs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Seymour X presents his patriotic review, England Expects. Why is the red blood flowing? Why do women weep? Why have our dear lost brothers gone to their last sleep? Oh, God. Come, is there much comrade, more of this? Come, consider. Let's look things All in right, the then. face. For this Don't is more I'm than war, anybody. mate. It's a call to the human race. We've watched you playing cricket and every kind of game. At football, golf and polo, you men have made you...
your name But now your country calls you To play your part in war And no matter what befalls you We shall love you all the more So come and join the forces As your fathers did before Oh, we don't want to lose you But we think you ought to she took her. For your king and your country more. All right. Never better. Do I look all right? Not so dusty. You haven't got any nerves, have you? But with all our might and main, we shall cheer you, thank you, kiss you when you come back again. Come. The three corners of the world in arms, and we shall shock them. Naught shall make us rue if England to itself rest but true. This is the great accounting. The supreme being has ordered the nations of the world to decide between good and evil between decency and order and callous self-interest and chaos. The British Empire, the chosen leaders of the world, shall travel along the road of human destiny and progress. At the end we shall see the Prince of Peace, the Star of Bethlehem, which leads directly to God. How was it? Well, I thought it was a bit on the heavy side. Seemed to go down all right. About 36 joined up on the spot. You know, Peggy, this is a wonderful country. To see these people, how they're willing to sacrifice everything. Now I tell you, Peggy, it gets me there. I can see that. You know you're an old softy, really. Yeah, a British working man, Peggy. Peace or war, war or peace. Well, they're, they're the salt of the earth. They work hard, play hard, but fair, mind you. Fight hard. Nothing is too good for them. Tommy, you say free for... insurance. That's what we do. In John Bull. What, for anyone killed or injured at the front? No, 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 no. For the people at home. Anybody hurt in a Zeppelin raid? Can't have our fighting men worried about their folks at home. <sighs> Draw it up, I'll sign it. Oh, get a photographer. Send the picture out to the troops. Oh, they'll cheer them up. It's me. It's I. There you are. Uh, hardly the weather for sitting in the summer house, is it? I like it out here. Oh, it's cold. Aren't you cold? Yes. But I don't feel it. Eh? Horace. Well, Horatio, after Nelson, you know. He had it built for me. Hey, of course I did. He's too busy to get down. Always up in London, eating and drinking with lords and ladies, proper people, no, you know. Look, Lizzie, I just dropped in to see how you were getting on, you know. Just talk some sense, will you? Life's pretty tricky at the moment without you making it worse. Wears a different suit every day of the week. Handmade shirts goes around with Peggy Primrose, the actress. Very smart she is, the tart. Uh, don't start that again. You could have been up there with me. You just weren't the type. You couldn't rise to it. He tells the Prime Minister what to do. They say they ought to put him in charge of the war. I wouldn't do any harm. Where's Florence? Who? Florence, my... Your daughter. She'll call me when it's time. Time for what? Do you remember the gypsies that used to come round, selling lavender? They said I had a lucky face on Lavender Hill. Lizzie, you're wandering. Why don't you go into the house? My friends are out here. But there's no one out here. I know. Oh, I'm going in. Here, let's... let's do your coat up. Christ, Liza, you're as cold as the grave.
Now look, Peggy, you mustn't get upset, but we've had to cancel the performance. Sorry? Only 20 tickets sold. It looks silly in the theatre that holds nearly a thousand. Oh, I've let you down. No, you have not. No, you were wonderful. It's a rotten play. You said it was good. Make my name. Well, you can't always tell on paper. Besides, you didn't have much support. You can't carry the old show. It's no good blaming other people. I'm just not good enough. I'm a flop. No, you mustn't say that. Don't even think it. Bottomley is never associated with flops. Hold your head up, Peggy. The public isn't up to good stuff. But That's all that all. money. Ten thousand pounds. Don't worry about it. I've lost more than that in a week's racing. And I couldn't get over the first fence. Oh, Horace, it would have been better if I'd stayed in small parts. I'm all right in supporting roles. I'm just not a star. Oh, but you are, Peggy. You are. I am going to make you into a star. <laughs> I am. <gasps> what's the matter? Horry? Horry, what's in that pot? You're all hot. Look. Oh, Horry. You're going to have to ease up. Let me undo that. You can't go on rushing about. You don't give yourself time to live. I can't give up now. I can't let can't let people down. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're grey. The war will go on without you killing yourself. There's talk of me being drafted into the war cabinet. Oh, do you think that's likely? Well, do you? The people's choice. <laughs> but not the cabinet's choice. Mm. You've been useful to them, but... No, not, not respectable. Out of the wrong drawer. Too big for his boots, too clever for his own good. Oh, I know, I know what they say. <sighs> At a time like this, you'd think they'd be big enough to see further than that. High class or low class. I mean, who's fighting the war for them? Who's... who's getting blown to bits? Look, you're going to have to settle for it. You're like a dog with a bone. The high-ups, the people who count, they, they don't want you. It's no use getting yourself in a state. I've seen them, Peg, at close quarters. Half of them can't even type their own shoelaces. I can run rings round them. I don't begrudge them. It's them that begrudges me. No, I don't understand you. You've done everything. You've made pots of money and spent it. Had a high old time with horses and women. Oh, why can't you be satisfied? Peg, it's been like sitting on a barrel of gunpowder. I've been sitting on it for years, holding it down. One day it'll go off and then... And then it'll be bang. The end of old Bottomley and serve him right to. Now, get this down. Big letters, heavy type. Send for Bottomley, the man without public school or university education who knows how the common man thinks. Right, uh, front page, all that. Now, uh, back page. Invest your money with Bottomley, the people's patriot. Uh, government war loan securities will be purchased and the interest will go to a fund which can... Can? Be can be distributed as prizes to war stock shareholders. Yes, sir. The chance to uh, win a big prize while leaving your investment intact. 77,500 becomes 100,000 in five years, Tommy. I've just got the figures, Cap. How much? Well, up yesterday morning, 80,000 had come in. Yeah. For all the unlucky subscribers, I shall be running a war stock consolation scheme, but I can't do it on 15 shillings and sixpence. No, they'll have to go up to a pound. They'll have to pay the extra four and six if they want to be included. Well, uh, that's fair, very fair. Yeah, and Tommy, I'm going to wind up the John Ball Investment Trust. It hasn't done very well. Huh? I'm prepared to offer sixpence for any shares outstanding. That's not bad for a totally derelict company. Well, a generous, I'd say. <laughs> That's it. Cheers. It's over. Mm. Mm, four years. Maybe you'll settle down now. Well, it's going to be a new era, Peggy. Be no medals for old Bottomley. We must start to build our lives again. Yeah, don't worry, Peg. I'll find something suitable to launch you into the big time. Oh, I don't know. That other show, it knocked the stuffing out of me. I still get nightmares. 
standing out there, all dressed up and nowhere to go. Nobody clapping or laughing. Not a spark of life in the whole place. I can't go through now that don't again. start getting yourself all worked up again. <laughs> I know what a mug's like. I get a bundle of play strips every day. A right lot of old rubbish, most of them. One came in the other day with a man dressed up as a woman. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Charlie's aunt. <laughs> right nut of a play if ever I saw one. Funny ideas some people have. <laughs> and now the war's over. It'd be a different climate. People want to forget all about that drudgery and misery. They'd be in a mood for something light and cheerful. Good songs, pretty dresses, that sort of thing. Well, I think I've lost my nerve. Nonsense. Bottomly doesn't back losers. You do. Every day. Look at this. Look at this. Victory bonds, five pounds each. Well, must be a good bet, eh? Well, I expect they are, Tommy, but five pounds? How many working men can lay their hands on five pounds? How many old people ever see that kind of money? How many ex-service men can take advantage of this... Offer. Well, not many. This is deliberately set up for the rich to get richer. Never mind the man in the street, five pounds. For most people, five pounds is in the realms of high finance. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll run our own scheme for a pound. Eh? Five shareholders will be able to buy a share between them. We'll run a draw for the interest while... Your investment remains intact. Exactly. <laughs> Your old friend Reuben has taken leave of his senses. Look at this, a telegram of all things. I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Confess, unmask England's greatest living humbug, eh? What is this, Gov? A man who takes the name of the Lord in vain to cover up his horrible sins? Is this a gag, Gov? At least I'm only the greatest living humbug. I suppose I ought to be grateful for that. Funny sense of humour, old Reuben. Christ, Gov, no, I didn't expect all this. Yeah, people know a good thing when they see it. I know, but, but this is amazing. There's two more rooms downstairs, just the same. Yeah, the British working man is a patriot. He welcomes a chance to help his country recover from the ravages of war. Yeah, well, I'll have to take on more clerks. I mean, piles of checks, money. I, I don't know where to put it all. Well, I do. I'll take this for expenses for a start. That hasn't been checked yet. Hey, what about you, Tommy? You'll be needing something to go on with. Uh, yeah, I've filled my pockets already, Gov. Well, I'll just nip round the bank with this lot, sir. Yeah, makes you proud, Tommy. Magnificent response. Uh, I, I've got some of the names and addresses, but I'm afraid it's all got a bit out of yeah, Don't worry about that. If anyone writes in for a seat, send them one. Not quite the ticket, now Just is it? do your best. Well, come on, Tommy, let's get moving. Yeah, I've got a whole tip for the 3.30. What a life, eh? Oh, hello, it's a postman again. <laughs> Where are we going to put it all, eh? <laughs> Special <laughs> delivery, eh? Well, let's try one, just for fun. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, I close my eyes on here, but it's one. <laughs> Right. Ah. What's that now? Ah, three pounds? <laughs> Hello. I'd sooner trust you than the government. Oh, well, that's nice. Not a bad judge. Everyone a winner. <laughs> Who wants to try the lucky dip? Uh, look at that, Tommy. Oh, it's raining, money. The snow storm has found notes. The cascade of sovereigns. I can't stop it. The old carpet of filthy loot is piling up. Close the door. It's coming up the stairs. It's up to my knees. Here I am. Born a poor boy. Survivor of over 200 bankruptcy petitions. Being buried alive. Oh, Joe, you wanted to see me? I thought it might have been the other way about, but never mind. Yes, it's these papers. Not John Bull. No, no, John Bull's all right. I'm keeping an eye on that. After all, this is our registered title. Well, then. You please yourself. It's not my money. These other papers, the National News and the Sunday Evening Telegraph, huh, daft idea that was. Still, it's your money and your funeral. The money's all right, Joe. Oh, well, if you won't listen. I take it you've seen these pamphlets. Well, pamphlets. Oh, my God. This is why we're not getting the ads. Hundreds of them in every post. Here, look. I'll give you a sample. The downfall of Horatio Bottomley, MP. His latest and greatest swindle. It's about your victory bond club. 
Look, it's your business. How many of these have been circulated? Sold, Horace. Sold. About a quarter of a million. Bigland. Aye. Aye, it's all right, Joe. It's a clear case of libel. I'm transferring some money to your account, Peg. Oh, that's nice. It's a uh, business, you know, a device. Nothing to worry about. You, uh, mm, you won't spend it all, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Here's victory bonds, Tommy. The interest's a bit low, don't you think? The French government has made a much better offer. Well, thinking of making a transfer, Gov? Yeah, well, they're a little bit more expensive, uh, 15 pounds. Are they? Well, no, they're nine, but they'll be the expenses of a Paris office. If anyone with 10 pounds in victory bonds wants to add five for a transfer... Oh, I'll see to it. Announcement in John Ball. Where else, Tommy? Where else? Who were these people? I don't know. What did they want? They just wanted to make a list. A list of what? A list of everything. Why did you let them in? But they said it would be all right. Oh my God, Lizzie, you, you haven't got the brains you was born with. No, you've got all the brains. That's why you're in such a mess. You don't realise there's people trying to drag me down. Be too smart for them. Too smart for me, are Look, I am transferring the deed to this place into your name. It's a precaution. It's all very well, Tommy, but we won't do much business while these pamphlets are circulating. Yeah, I know, but... You but, know, but what? Well, a bit dodgy, eh, Gov? I mean, you know, we ain't done so bad out of the victory bond caper, even with the money that we've had to pay back. Yeah, well, that's just the point. I mean, demands for repayments are getting to an ever large. Well, it's better to pay them out than have them all go to court. But, Tommy, we haven't had a single action, have we? Mm, no. I think the punters are waiting to see how Bigland gets on. My client alleges criminal libel and blackmail on two separate occasions. Named in the pamphlet from which I quote, Horatio Bottomley became the possessor of nearly one million pounds of poor people's money. With no trustees to cooperate, the interests of widows and ex servants was ludicrous. Water into petrol? <laughs> when I refused to fall in with his swindling proposition, he said, I will smother the country with stories about you. I will pursue you until I have dragged you down into the gutter. The man was obsessed with the idea of revenge. And exactly how many people subscribed to this uh, victory bond? I do not have the exact figure on me. I don't carry a set of books around with me. But you do have a record of the number of subscribers. But I am not here to be cross-examined. I'm here to deny the libel. Mr. Bottomley, if you give evidence, the council is entitled to ask you questions on your statements. I am suggesting that your intention was that the whole machinery should be under your control. Absolutely not. I deny. I can't say I was ever in favour of taking him to court. What else could I do? You couldn't be worse off than you are now. The judge has said he can't believe anything you say. Under oath. You see, Gov, if they start raking around... Well, didn't you send the books to Paris? Well, no, of course I did, but that's going to look fishy when it comes out. Mr. Wilde, <clears> am, <throat> I, am I to understand that your client still <clears throat> alleges criminal libel and blackmail? but refuses to give any further evidence. My client is not in pursuit of damages, my lad. He is here to clear his good name. He is of the opinion that the court has heard enough to be able to judge the truth. Oh, is he? Do you think we could arrange for an adjournment around 11.30 each day? Most unusual. Why? Need a drop of the old bubbly. The old brain works better. Oh. It's medicinal, really. To my eternal sorrow and disgrace, I was mixed up with Bottomley in a swindle called the War Stock Combination. <clears throat> For services rendered, Bottomley awarded me the third prize in a draw, a matter of £1,000. No names were printed of the winners. On another occasion, Bottomley gave me £200 for bribing a man not to bring action against John Bull. Then I arranged a burglary to remove vital evidence. And when did your um, conscience begin to trouble you? <laughs> I have been offered £20,000 
to give no evidence in this case. Are you sure you don't mean that you have asked for £20,000 to withdraw? Mr. Bottomley has brought this action against my client, Mr. Bigland, but he is frightened to go into the witness box and face examination. Why? They've cleared out my flat, Peggy. Who has? My impatient creditors. I can't wait for the ship to sink. From the Victory Bond account, Mr. Bottomley drew £5,000 for his brother-in-law. I've kept some of them in business for years. £7,000 for racing expenses. £1,650 to buy shares in a hotel in Worthing. Oh, Horace, you've done it this time, good and proper. £15,000 for the German submarine Deutschland for exhibition. £41,000 for the purchase of two newspapers. And... Here is a bill for champagne amounting to £1,000. It was for entertaining. I didn't drink it all myself. <laughs> were you paid for your patriotic speeches during the war? They were lectures. I was bankrupt at the time. A man... A man has to make a living on to me all the time. Questions, questions. I can't think fast enough. I know all the answers, but I can't deal with all this at once. All right, go. Take it easy. It's your big day tomorrow. I have been asked what will happen if things go wrong. I believe in British justice, and I know things cannot go wrong. You've heard about my income. 200,000 in the bank. Why should I want to rob poor people and ex-soldiers? Come on, Peggy, let's go out somewhere. I'm gonna get off. I feel it in my bones. You've been <laughs> drinking. Yeah, of course I've been drinking to celebrate my marvelous victory over my enemies. You won't know that until tomorrow. Oh. But there must be some mistake. This isn't possible. The sentence of the court is that you be kept in penal servitude for seven years. Oh. Peggy. Oh. Are you all right? All right. Well, as you see, Peg, as you see, it's a full circle. Just like the orphanage. Cold, horrible food. I rose above it before. Yes. It's such a waste, Peg. Waste of time, waste of me. When I get out of here, I'm going to make some people sit up. I've got a new title for a paper. John... Blunt. That's good, eh? Got a ring about it. Yes. I believe in this country, Peg. In its greatness. The judge was biased against me. One day, people will see all that. I expect so. Even so. I had a good run, didn't I? Had a good run. After losing an appeal, Horatio Bottomley served five years in Maidstone Jail. On leaving prison, he tried to pick up his business affairs, but eventually died penniless in 1933, aged 73. Man of the People was written by Alan Sadler with Patrick Moore as Horatio Bottomley. Others in the cast, Tommy Cox, Gregory Phillips, Peggy Primrose, Tessa Worsley, Reuben Bigland, O'Hagan and the Barrister, Edward de Souza, Eliza, Debbie Hurst, Joe Elias, David Garth, Wild KC, Peter Woodthorpe, James, Chip Sweeney, 